Hi everyone, welcome back to Reading Wednesdays. Today I'm going to be reading chapters 7 and 8 of Kate the Chemist, Dragons vs. Unicorns. When we last left off, Kate and Bertie had just unsuccessfully tried to convince Principal Mom, uh, Kate's mom, that little Kate should be hosting chemistry camp over fall break. It was unsuccessful, and so now Kate and Bertie are waiting for Elijah to come over and they're going to try to figure out what to do. So, starting with chapter 7, leaving it up to chance. Guess a noun. I want to be a more comfortable for this one. <laughs> All right. The molecules have moved further apart than in a solid or a liquid. They are like bumper cars, ramming into one another, completely out of control. After dinner and delicious brownies that Bertie and I managed to get perfectly fudgy, Elijah, Bertie, and I jumped on the trampoline in my backyard. We're out of control gas molecules, I shouted, throwing my arms wildly and slamming into Bertie, who giggled and plugged her nose like we were stinky. Does everything have to be about chemistry, asked Elijah. Like, couldn't we be just kids jumping on a trampoline? Bertie stuck out her tongue. Boring! Don't you ever pretend that you're something else when you're practicing the drums? No, said Elijah. That would be weird. Can you two stop it, I said, plopping myself down on the trampoline. I want to have a very important conversation. What fall break camp are we going to do together? Don't you think the robotics club sounds cool? Bertie made a face and plopped down next to me. My sister did that one a few years ago and brought the stuff home. I already know everything they're going to do, so no thanks. Hey, I've got an idea. Elijah picked up the info sheet and then tossed it so it fluttered, settling near the netting of the trampoline. The writer's workshop, that's what we should do. Uh-uh, I shook my head. Too much sitting. It's break, it has to be fun. I popped up and did a front flip, landing next to my friends. Something cool. How about cheer club, said Bertie. Veto, Elijah gave a thumbs down. I can't do a very good cartwheel or a backflip. Me either, I said. Hey, what about Lego camp? That might be okay. Agreed, said Elijah. Not agreed, Bertie crossed her arms. I don't want to sit around and watch you two fight it out when Kate, with Kate obsessed with following directions and Elijah tossing them out. I laughed at a recent memory. Yeah, remember when Elijah built some space station using random parts from the rainforest kit? And you had a meltdown, Elijah reminded me. Ugh, a definite no. Bertie rolled her eyes. What about drama? Elijah spread out his arms like he was about to give a monologue. Not you too, I groaned. It's not just about acting and dancing and singing, said Bertie. They need people to paint the sets, run the spotlights, and open the curtains. Oh, and one really organized fifth grader to be the assistant director. That could be you, Kate. You're the most organized fifth grade ever. I am? Okay, suddenly I was. Maybe just a little intrigued. So it's a deal, shouted Elijah. Elijah, we're all going to go for the musical. Bertie squealed. The show is so good. This one unicorn meets a dragon. Ah! Okay, so this one unicorn meets a dragon and they become friends, but the other unicorns don't like that and neither do the dragons. In the end, the unicorn and dragon BFFs show everyone that they have more in common than they, than they thought, and the rest of the dragons and unicorns all do a final number together. It did actually sound a little cool. I want to be the lead unicorn, said Bertie, tossing her hair like it was a mane. I want to be in charge of lights, said Elijah. If I flash them back and forth, I can make it look like a lightning storm. Maybe I could be director, I said. Assistant director, corrected Bertie. Mrs. Hansberry Barry is the director. Right, I suddenly felt a glimmer of hope that maybe there was something about drama that might suit me. It's the perfect plan, said Bertie. It was, as long as we all got the positions we wanted. Chapter 8, All the World's a Stage. Law, Noun. In science, a law explains a cause and effect that is always the same under the same conditions. It is accepted as true. So if someone makes a goal every time they play soccer, that could be a law. What if I don't get assistant director, I said. Bertie squinted at me as we sat together in the school auditorium a little over a week after we had decided to do drama camp. It was Monday morning and the first day of fall break. You not get assistant director? Um, that's not possible. You really are the best one for the job. While Mrs. Hansberry had everyone audition for a speaking role on Friday, we wrote down our info on a sheet if we wanted to be part of the stage crew and what our qualifications were. I ended up needing a second sheet to explain why I thought I'd be a good assistant director. I'm not sure when Mrs. Hansberry heard me sing during auditions, she knew I couldn't be in the cast. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry, it said, I'm sure when Mrs. Hansberry heard me sing during auditions, she knew I couldn't be in the cast, I said. But maybe she could just give me a different crew job. I was worried. Nothing is for certain. In science, laws are widely accepted as true, and there was no law saying I was going to be assistant director. Look, Kate, it has to be someone organized. 
Check. Someone who doesn't mind telling other people what to do? Check. Someone who can keep track of many things at once? Check. The assistant director position has your name all over it, and you submitted such a good application. Seriously, what if I don't get it? Then you'll do something else, said Bertie, who sat next to me in the second row. In front of us sat Avery and Phoenix, while Elijah sat with his friend Jeremy Rowe in the aisle across the way. We were all waiting for Mrs. Hansberry to announce who got what part or position for the musical. About two dozen other kids sat in the seats also waiting. I guess being prop master could be okay. That was my second choice, but it wasn't as good as assistant director. I glanced at the sleek leather backpack at my feet. My mom let me borrow her leather bag. I had packed an emergency theater supply kit so big I couldn't get my regular backpacks to close. My emergency kit included thick rope, two bottles of water, tape, glue, a measuring tape, and scissors. I wanted to be prepared. I really hope we both get what we want, Bertie whispered. You will, I told her. You're an amazing singer, even when you're upside down. Bertie blushed. She's not very good at compliments. Uh, thanks. You deserve the lead or unicorn. Seriously, there is nobody in the entire fifth grade who knows more about them. And if, shh, said Bertie, pointing to the stage, which was completely empty. Mrs. Hansberry's coming. I heard her voice. Right. Bertie has super good hearing. She can hear my dad snoring when she spends the night, even when we spread out in sleeping bags downstairs in the basement. Hey, I said, leaning over to look at Bertie's drawing. Can I see? She snapped shut her drawing pad. Aw, come on, Bertie. All I caught a glimpse of was where she had signed her name. Brenda Bat. She always signed her art with her real name. Bertie was just a nickname. I'm sure it's fantabulous and could be framed in a museum. She stuffed the pad into her backpack. Another time. She was such an amazing artist. Every year since we were five, she had drawn me a handmade birthday card. I kept them all in a box under my bed, but sometimes she was private about her artwork. Kids murmured and pointed at Mrs. Hansberry made, as Mrs. Hansberry made her way to the front of the stage. Like always, she was dressed dramatically. This afternoon, she wore a bright green shawl and long dangly earrings in the shape of theater masks. I'm going to announce roles and positions, said Mrs. Hansberry, so if you could please have your attention. Actually, Mrs. Hansberry didn't need to say that last part. The place was as silent as outer space. I couldn't wait to hear what she was about to say. Ah! Oh my god, I love that. And that chapter was seriously based off my best friend, who actually, her nickname is Birdie, um, so that's who that's based off of. She's a fantabulous artist in real life as well, and I just love, love, love when she gives me things um, in her drawings and pieces like that are things that mean a lot to me. So in honor of the real birdie, today what I'm going to be doing is giving away a signed autograph copy of Dragons vs. Unicorns in addition to an advanced reader's copy of the next book, The Great Escape. So in order to win the giveaway, uh, the first person who posts on Instagram, I can't wait for The Great Escape, so it needs to be those exact words, I can't wait for The Great Escape, I will contact you and send both books your way.